So, anybody recognize this guy? Come on, you Italiano. <laughs> this is Enzo Ferrari. When they do, when they do, before Enzo Ferrari passed away, they would do a survey every year. Who is the most uh, liked man in Italy? And Enzo was always number one, and the Pope was number two. Okay? And I'm not joking. Okay, this man was royalty. Okay, but he started out as a race car driver. There's Enzo back in 1920. Okay. And so the, the roots of Ferrari have always been racing, okay? And I happen to have an opportunity to do some consulting to Ferrari about a year ago. And I spent, and this is the Ferrari, uh, this is the racing group. It's probably more secretive than the CIA in here, okay? <laughs> this is where all the cool stuff happens, okay? This is where the really cool stuff happens, okay? And they've got a thousand engineers. Yeah, please. There's um, a movie of Ferrari, like, um, and I remember that in the movie it says uh, that always ends up Ferrari. Every time, like a driver was um, like, like one driver passed away or something, his first question was like, "How is the car?" Okay. <laughs> How is the car? Yeah, like, it's gonna work, or it's like completely lost. Yeah. What a compassionate man, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How is the car? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was very good. <laughs> oh my god. But that's, that's how deep the racing routes go, right? So Ferrari doesn't build cars for consumers because they want to. They build cars for consumers because that's how they fund racing, okay? Their business model is a subsidy model, okay? We are, gonna, we are about racing. And if you ever have a chance to go to the Ferrari Museum in Modena, there's two things there. There's balsam, it's the capital of balsamic vinegar, and it's where the Ferrari uh, Museum is, okay? They build race cars. This is the plant. The only way you get to go into this plant is if you bought about 10 Ferraris, okay? And there are people that own 10, 20, 30 Ferraris, okay? And of course, their designs have been amazing, okay? Now, they also have, you can now, you know, just like you can design your own Nike sneakers, you can design your own Ferrari, which would be a pretty cool thing to do. So this is uh, Eric Clapton's Ferrari. So Eric Clapton, so this is me with the head of HR at Ferrari. Um, and this guy runs the largest Ferrari racing team. And this is Clapton's Ferrari. It's one of 100 Ferraris that have been custom designed sitting in this museum. And the place is amazing, okay? And now these are some of the Pininfarina designs, okay? And you can see the Pininfarina plate, right? That's kind of the, the stylized signature Pininfarina on the, on the tail. And on the left is the famous Ferrari flag with the horse. And on the right is the Pininfarina emblem, okay? So obviously, so both of these companies, their histories are completely intertwined. They started at about the same time and they are, you know, and they've grown together, okay? And they both had incredible success, okay? So to have something designed by Pininfarina was truly to say that we, we have the best. And that, is that a fair thing to say for an Italian? Yeah? No? Who's better? <laughs> Armani, who do you like better? No, I don't know. Oh, Lamborghini, okay. But see, Ferrari would tell you that Lamborghini is for drug dealers and athletes, okay? <laughs> Ferrari, I'm, I'm not joking, and I will tell you this is very true. Ferrari decides who they sell to. Ferrari will look at your profile and say, you are not worthy of a Ferrari, okay? They will. I mean, imagine being in the position of being in marketing in Ferrari, okay? They, they don't make, they only make about 7,000 vehicles a year. So they get to decide whether you are worthy or not. And what they basically say is, you know, if you're kind of a new rich, if you're a, you know, new NFL or NBA player, or if you're a cartel member or, you know, someone like that, go get a Lamborghini, okay? You're a Lamborghini person. We are Ferrari. We, are, we cater to a very elite part of society, okay? And I'm not joking. It's a hell of a marketing challenge, right? Telling people you can't have my car, okay? I don't think I've ever been in a business that has had the luxury of doing that, Sonny? But don't they go to people whom they identify as customers and go sell it to them directly? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not suggesting that. I mean, they have dealerships, of course. But, you know, at the end of the day, they have very few dealerships, right? No, no, no. I mean, like, uh, if you are an emerging businessman and you're making a lot of money, they come to you to offer you a deal, like, get our car. It, it obviously it depends on the nature of the business, right? If it's, if it's a business in sort of a questionable world, they're not going to come to you. Okay. 
okay? But at the end of the day, it's only because that person's probably shown some interest in owning a Ferrari. It's a lot like wanting to belong to an elite country club or golf club, right? So, uh, at the Ferrari Museum in Maranello, right, what you learn is, you know, they put a lot of emphasis on the engines, okay? So they proudly display their engine technology. And, and now what we're gonna do after the break is we're gonna have um, Lisette Bacher, who is a Holt MIB from two years ago, who is now working for Automobili Pininfarina, dial in. We're supposed to have Holt AV here today. So I'm hoping we can figure out how to do this, but I'm gonna give you guys a break while we figure out how to dial Lisette. I have her presentation and I'd like to have her. But what happened was, because Ferrari could never imagine having a hybrid or an electric vehicle, they gave their blessing to Pininfarina to work with another company in order to have an electric vehicle, okay? Otherwise, it would have been basically treason, okay? So, so Pininfarina was then given the freedom to work with another party to create a hypercar that was a 100% electric hypercar. And this is the company that is based in Munich, Germany. Uh, and this is the product that was literally just debuted very recently. Um, and we've got a really cool deck from Lisette. So we're gonna figure out how to get her online, okay? We were supposed to record this session for tomorrow and I was supposed to have the AV guy in here about a half hour ago, so we'll see what happens, okay? So why don't you guys take 15 minutes so we can pull this together uh, and if not, I'll walk you through the deck, but I'd much rather have Lisette do it, okay? So please be back at five up. This should be very cool.